Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be talking about the future of Blizzard's game portfolio. Based off their job listings, there are at least two unannounced game projects that we actually know a decent amount of stuff about in terms of their release platforms and their genres. Today I'm going to be breaking down what we know, giving us a bit of a glimpse at what could be in the future for Blizzard Entertainment. First though, we need to talk about where many of the World of Warcraft developers went. Brian Holinka, Tom Chilton, Craig Amai, all decently senior public facing developers left the World of Warcraft development team, but they did not leave Blizzard Entertainment. Developers from other teams have also moved on to other projects. Eric Dodds is no longer the game director of Hearthstone. Over on the StarCraft front, David Kim is working on another Blizzard project. And on to Heroes of the Storm, Dustin Browder left his position for a new Blizzard project. So broadly, we actually have seen a little bit of a reshuffling of some of Blizzard's senior developers to new projects that have not been announced yet. There is the possibility that some are working on currently released Blizzard games, but we know specifically that a few of them are on to new projects. And frankly, I'd imagine that if somebody was reassigned onto one of Blizzard's live games, that we probably would know. Now, we need to talk about Team 5, who created Hearthstone. They were a small, agile team that brought together top talent within the company with the goal of prototyping a new game idea. This led to Hearthstone, which has been one of Blizzard's greatest successes. This highly robust form of agile development allows for Blizzard to concept more ideas, create more prototypes, and attempt to find the fun a lot more more, all without sinking Project Titan levels of money into a project. Now, they have talked about how this strategy worked really well for them with Hearthstone, so it's reasonable to assume that at some point, likely in the last two years, similar team formations have taken place. This then brings us on to the main part of today's discussion, the new games. Now, this is based off 11 job openings for two unannounced projects. All of these openings are either for senior or lead roles, and when you actually dive further further into the various openings, many of them reference experience in conducting job interviews and helping new staff members grow within the company and within the team. This tells us that these projects are pretty much still in early days. Oftentimes, the core creatives will get together, form an outline for a project, and essentially do some sort of game jamming. This small team bounces around ideas and they eventually work on proof of concept prototypes, visual tests, treatments, basically the kind of thing that you would need to make a killer pitch for the top staff of the company. That's the likes of, say, Mike Morheim. But this stage can only take them so far. A team needs to grow, and to grow, you need to sort out who is going to be in the lead positions. These are the staff members who will play an extremely important role in terms of both their contributions to the game, but also their contributions from a project management and leadership point of view. They need to be able to work out the identity of the game themselves, but they also need to work on expanding the team. Once there is a proof of concept for everything, well, you need the rank and file staff who are actually going to be doing a lot of the work and producing all that stuff. Taking my own game project as an example, we spent a long time with our animation and art leads nailing down how to make an enemy really awesome and develop a content production pipeline for it. If we were a larger company, we would then be wanting to expand our team with people who can take over the creation of the various assets within the pipeline that has been established. Now, that's the kind of thing that we won't really be doing in a massive amount because we don't have Blizzard money, but that's the kind of thing that's going on at this stage, or at least that's my best guess. It's a lot of the formations and processes and uh, working out the concepts and the broad sort of designs. Now, one thing that's interesting is none of these were design roles. They're all art and engineering roles. Now, this would make you think that the core of the game's identity is decently established and really we're looking for the people who will actually be building the game with these job openings. So when you go through the positions, you see openings for art leads. These are the people who are going to be outlining the visual identity for these games, as well as the production pipeline for the assets. There's then various lead engineers who will be responsible for managing the technical challenges that each project faces, as well as hiring on other engineers who they think will be a good fit for the project's requirements. Really, it's all about forming a crack team at the very core of the project, so that the eventual team is built on really solid foundations. Now that I think I know what they're doing, 
mostly, <laughs> it's hard to know exactly, let's talk about the two projects. So, broadly, we've got a mobile MMO RTS that is going to be running on the Unity engine, and then we have a first-person action game that is running on a custom engine. I don't know if this means it's running on the Overwatch engine, a fork of that engine, or if they're just making something new for it, even though that might be a bit of a strange way to go. When you look at the actual openings, they are quite detailed, with some of them referencing tech like WPF, which basically is a specific to Windows thing. Overall, it's really very clear which offerings are for each of the two game projects. Um, so for the mobile one, uh, it's an MMO. Now that's a strange term in mobile. Normally it means something like Clash of Clans, um, and then RTS is also a bit of a broad thing on mobile. Generally it means Clash of Clans or something like, say, uh, Clash Royale, which is a fantastic game. As much as I sort of don't really like the business model, the core game there is actually brilliantly done. So a part of me kind of wonders are we going to see another entry to the Heroes of Warcraft line? Uh, something that's maybe more action-oriented that would fit alongside Hearthstone? Doubt it's going to be Warcraft 4. And uh, really, I, I doubt they're going to do a new IP on mobile, to be honest with you. Now, as for the next game, it's almost certainly a shooter. The various job listings mention experience in uh, shooter and action games in the AAA industry. And we know that, uh, you know, like Overwatch, it's going to be running on a custom engine. Now, the various different uh, artistic posts mention some pretty high-end software and rendering techniques like PBR that are typically, you know, they're a PC and console thing. As much as phones are getting really, really powerful these days, mobile games generally do need to run on a very broad range of devices. So what could this project be? I mean, we really have no idea other than... It's a first-person action game, likely a shooter. The first thing that comes to mind is some sort of PvE game in the Overwatch universe. Like, you know, maybe say, if it was a campaign-based game, then I think it would be pretty cool if you could maybe create your own hero over Overwatch, like a new recruit, um, and then work alongside or against the established characters in Overwatch. That would seem like a pretty natural fit if you wanted to do it that way, but that's, uh, I don't have faith in Blizzard being strong enough storytellers to make a narrative game work. I feel like it's the one area in the industry where they're just miles behind everyone else. Um, we could see something that's taking a few more of those Destiny cues, perhaps, um, or, you know, it could be an expansion to Overwatch, something like that. Overall, just doing something with Overwatch seems like the next logical step. The franchise really resonated with people. It's got a massive install base. It's got characters that, like, they're kind of one-dimensional due to the limitations of a PvP shooter, but they're certainly well-recognized and liked by players. So really doing something with Overwatch is just a license to print money, and if the Uprising event is anything to go by, people really enjoy Overwatch PvE. It could, of course, be something else, but I don't really see that much point in speculating. We just don't know that much. Now, it's also very likely that Blizzard do have other projects going on. They're a massive company. Like, it, it's scary how big they are, and I imagine there's almost always prototypes and ideas floating about the place. The Blizzard of old used to be quite hierarchical, rigid, very old in its uh, management and stuff like that. But perhaps the lessons in creative agility that Hearthstone taught them have led to the team sort of, uh, you know, investing in more fresh ideas. Hopefully, anyway, the wait between Overwatch and the next new Blizzard IP will not be as long as the wait from StarCraft 1 to Overwatch. And finally, I'd like to mention that there is a position open for a lead production director on an unannounced Diablo project. Now, Blizzard have all but dropped Diablo from a content perspective, with Reaper of Souls coming out... Three and a half years ago, I think. Now, yeah, sure, the Necromancer stuff released, but that's not a new story, it's not a new setting. So whatever this Diablo thing is, I'd imagine it's quite some time away, but damn, I'd like to see some new Diablo content. But really, that's all that we've got to go on for now. As for BlizzCon, well, it's quite soon, actually, but honestly, most of this stuff seems way, way too far off for BlizzCon. I mean, when you think about it, they've got a WoW expansion to announce as, like, their big headline thing to blow everyone away. So I think that's pretty much what BlizzCon's going to be this year. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching this video, and please let me know down in the comments what do you think these game projects could be and what do you think would be really awesome for Blizzard to do. And uh, with that, I want to thank everyone who supports the channel over on Patreon in these times of demonetization and apocalypse it really does help a hell of a lot so a massive thank you to those guys thank you for watching this video and as always i will see you next time